I'm going to start out with the primary reason that regular buckshot can fail to kill a bear. As this case demonstrates, regular buckshot is soft enough that it can fail to penetrate the thick bone of a bear's shoulder. Since this was a 10 gauge load, it's safe to assume that the pellets were fairly large, but despite this, they still flattened out when they hit bone. This is not a problem specific to buckshot either. If you have a soft lead shotgun slug, it can also flatten out and stop on a bear's shoulder. There is a reason why shotgun slugs are generally seen as good for bear defense and buckshot is shunned. This reason is that slugs made of harder alloyed lead, like Brennecke Classic Magnums, are commonly available, and there is only soft lead buckshot rounds being sold. The conversation around slugs versus buckshot changes entirely when you realize that one, soft lead buckshot can penetrate just as deep in ballistics gel as proven bear defense slugs can, and two, you can get hard cast lead buckshot that won't deform like soft lead does. I don't think hard cast lead buckshot is the best round for every situation, just the close encounters that are typical for brushy, low visibility areas. If you are in an area with more visibility and less brush, a slug or a rifle would be much better because they have much greater range. I should mention that it is possible to kill bears with regular buckshot or soft lead slugs. This is useful to know if you are being attacked and this is all you have. However, if you have a shotgun explicitly for bear defense, you should definitely use more effective rounds like a Brennecke Classic Magnum Slug or Hard Cast Lead Buckshot. Of all of the people who have died in documented bear attacks in North America, only one person's death was due to buckshot failing to kill the bear. This took place before smokeless powder was invented, so it was soft lead buckshot propelled by black powder. Henry Gates shot a bear in the teeth with buckshot. This succeeded in only knocking a few teeth out and causing the bear to attack Henry Gates. Henry later died because of the injuries sustained during this attack. It's also worth mentioning that people are not typically killed by bears due to ammunition failure. The vast majority of fatal bear attack victims were unarmed and were consequently unable to defend themselves effectively. Obviously, bear's teeth do not have special properties, as the example on the top demonstrates that a tiger's teeth have the possibility of deflecting a rifle bullet as well. Bullets can also be easily deflected by small tree branches. The second story also demonstrates that soft lead 12 gauge slugs are not very effective on lions either. This lion was shot in the back with the slug. The slug only made a shallow wound and failed to kill the lion. The author ran into the same lion about 10 days later and used 303 full metal jacket rounds to kill it. This story was first published in 1907 to give you a point of reference. Some people are convinced that bears are extremely tough and humans are much less tough, being consequently much easier to kill. These folks will usually prove their point with an example of a bear that took quite a few rounds before it finally died. We can actually compare two mostly similar cases of both man and bear being shot with 30-40 crag rounds. The bear was shot six times with rifle rounds and the man took five rifle rounds plus four pistol bullets. With this evidence, you could easily conclude a determined man and a determined bear can take a similar amount of rifle rounds before they die. We can make a similar comparison with less powerful rounds. The man took 17 rounds of 45 ACP before dying. The bear took 13 Henry bullets before dying. I deduce that the Henry bullets mentioned were very likely 44 Henry rounds. This is a cartridge that is similar in power to some hot 45 ACP loads. People will also say large animals like bears are uniquely tough because they can fall over and be seemingly dead after you shoot them, only to get back up and attack when you get close. Again, other animals can do this, including deer and humans. I have a rare example of a fatal deer attack below. The hunter assumed the buck was dead, but it got back up and gored the hunter, who later died from his wounds in a hospital. I would like to point out that there is a distinction between physical toughness and determination or rage. 
A bear that takes many bullets does not necessarily have to have tougher meat, for example. It may have just been more enraged than other bears. Also, from a physical standpoint, it's easily proven that bears and humans can both instantly die from a 22 bullet wound to the brain. I personally would not put too much trust in anyone that is deliberately cherry picking incidents to make it seem like bears are almost invulnerable compared to humans. I want to be very clear about how I think the following thoughts are very bad ideas. Some people believe that the first round in your bear defense shotgun should be birdshot because it can blind the bear, and other people think it's a good idea to use birdshot to scare away bears. First of all, the case on the top demonstrates that it is possible to kill a bear with birdshot, even a 410, at very close range. Since this works only at very close range, birdshot should only ever be used as a last resort. If you replace an effective slug or a buckshot round with a much less effective birdshot round, you are making a grave mistake. Second of all, you shouldn't use birdshot to scare away bears because you can unintentionally kill or blind the bear and land yourself in some serious legal trouble. If you want to scare away a bear that is not aggressive but has lost its fear of humans, use rubber slugs. Rubber slugs are more effective than bear spray, they have a greater range than bear spray, and they will cause no harm to the bear if properly used. Thanks for watching my video, and if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them in the comments section.